opportunity as uh, Helga said for us as a, as a research group uh, to learn from your from your input and from your questions and from uh, and maybe from your answers. So I'm very much uh, looking forward uh, to some uh, lively discussions after the presentation. Uh, ho hopefully a little bit more live, uh, lively than uh, uh, what we had so far. So it's really the uh, opportunity for you to have questions. And I think we should very much focus on uh, interactive discussions uh, after the presentation. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, I think uh, uh, Hilda and uh, Sebastian did a great job to introduce uh, to the event. And now uh, we had prepared a little uh, presentation uh, for more formally uh, introducing the case study portfolio. And uh, that is uh, maybe the occasion to uh, lead, lead, lead over to uh, Sebastian, uh, that will, uh, who, who will have, uh, have this uh, presentation now. Let's uh, speak a little more focused about um, our case studies. Um, <clears throat> when we set up this uh, cost action, uh, we had to write a memorandum of understanding, um, so that the mechanism of, um, of agreement, so if uh, someone wants to join this cost action, he has to agree on this memorandum of understanding, and uh, we as a group of researchers uh, formulated the memorandum of understanding and what we can find here is uh, we need the case studies for uh, also for delivering input to our theoretical framework uh, we need the practical uh, applied situations uh, we need uh, to utilize our computational tools uh, and uh, we need to demonstrate also the applicability of uh, what we have been thinking about. So, in, in this sense, uh, the uh, industry innovation days uh, really, really uh, support what we have in the memorandum uh, of understanding. This is a great tool to work on this. And, uh, yes, so in summary, basically, the, uh, our case studies, this is working group four. Uh, is the important link to our own theoretical working groups on the theoretical framework on the uh, structure health monitoring and performance and the methods and tools for the group one, two, three. And <coughs> also to, it is the link to our standardization activities. So, um, We have been uh, working on getting the case studies to work um, and we have been uh, interacting with the worker groups and, and our network and we have requested case studies and we have uh, collected quite, quite a few. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've also been starting out with uh, the identification of uh, typical challenges or difficulties we have been observing uh, in the uh, previous years of the age. So, it is 90 case studies uh, which are under development. Uh, you will hear eight case study presentations in case all the case study presenters are here. Do we? Yeah, super. So you will hear uh, eight studies, uh, case studies today at this workshop. <coughs> and uh, I think one major step we took here for the case studies uh, and in our thinking was uh, that we, this was already uh, in the last two presentations, we need to step a little out of, of our models and uh, also of our conventional integrity management procedures and uh, the specifics of our monitoring systems but to address a decision scenario 
or a decision situation. And we have been primarily looking at the design phase and the operation phase of an infrastructure. I think this is the most important phases. We have um, monitoring phenomena uh, regarding load processes, uh, damage detection, damage mechanisms, material properties. Actually, in our uh, in our framework, uh, we yeah we, we can quite uh, extend this. Uh, there's there's quite some ways uh, to go. Uh, if we have a more general perspective, for instance, on the system states and on, the, on basically in the complete infrastructure system. Um, our uh, structures uh, include um, bridges, buildings, energy production and storage, uh, geotechnical structures uh, and uh, various decision scenarios. We are working on a case study classification so that it becomes easy to overview uh, what we are doing for the case studies and or what case studies uh, do we have and uh, what is the result. So uh, the first point is that we classify the structure and the type, the life cycle phases, so the design and operation phase, what performance we are considering, is it deterioration or uh, is it the complete uh, performance of a, of a system including the risks and extreme loadings. Very important or the most important is our decision scenario, who is the decision maker, uh, what is the decision point in time. So uh, here the example is uh, for the structure integrity management, uh, the um, structure integrity management consisting of uh, yeah, very basic repair, inspection and monitoring should be planned uh, in the commissioning phase or even before in the design phase. Um, and the decision point in time is then uh, basically in the design or the commissioning phase uh, of a structure. This is where, uh, where our models are providing the highest benefit because uh, we can predict the performance. Uh, this is our decision tree I, I had in the last presentation. We can predict the performance, we can predict the uh, inspection outcomes, we can predict when to uh, repair and uh, we can also predict uh, what monitoring data we will obtain. And when we associate this to costs in, uh, with each of the branches we have, uh, then we have a pre posterior decision analysis, so we do a qualification of the expected benefits uh, before and we can optimize with our decision parameters. So, uh, the best way to utilize our models is pre-posterior, so before any SHM system installation or uh, any action performance. So what is the objective? The objective uh, is, uh, this is in our models, to maximize the uh, expected benefits or minimize the risks. So we are always working with probabilities and the uh, monetary consequences. So very important, this is the basics of our decision scenario. Uh, and then the decision variables, so this goes to in the decision frame to the rectangles, it's the action and the action parameters and it's the information requirement strategies, so inspections, uh, monitoring uh, and what parameters uh, do we have and uh, what different uh, strategies we can utilize. So these should all be documented very uh, shortly but distinct here uh, in this classification and then uh, it's the results, what is the value of information 
uh, like I outlined in the last uh, presentation. And uh, what are the decision rules? So, uh, what do we do in practice if uh, our monitoring system uh, provides one indication, so the structure is safe, for instance, then uh, what should be done? Then maybe the next uh, inspection or the next repair action can be done later. So, this is about the classification and the yeah, a way of summarizing and providing an overview of the case studies we are working on. Uh, a few words also to some uh, case studies which um, which are under development and which will not be presented here. So uh, this is, for instance, the soil structure interaction effects effects uh, on the uh, excitation and response of reinforced concrete buildings uh, in case of earthquakes. So this uh, is very important for. Iceland, uh, Jonas, who's, uh, who's here, yeah. who's working on this uh, case study. He has uh, access to a lot of data, uh, and uh, this is a perfect ground for for doing such a, such a case studies. Uh, but uh, we are working together on a few challenges, uh, like the uncertainty uh, quantification. And <clears throat> maybe uh, how to efficiently uh, do a damage detection uh, after such an event. Um, this is a case study uh, for the <coughs> information for seismic emergency management uh, of the highway bridge. Uh, Maria Pina and Simona Miraglia are working on this case study together with uh, Pier Francesco Giordano. Um, and uh, here we already have a decision tree. Yeah, that's a further development of this generic uh, decision tree we uh, have been seeing at the at the beginning. And. Um, One uh, aspect which uh, could be considered here is uh, whether uh, visual inspections uh, are more efficient or monitoring uh, is more efficient. Um, here we have a very well developed, uh, already very well developed uh, case study. There is a few publications uh, about the uh, assessment of uh, fatigue uh, details and uh, what value uh, um, fatigue monitoring can bring for for doing the condition assessment? Uh, I think the way of uh, further uh, working on this uh, case study is to also have a system perspective. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is very important. We are going with our methodology in, uh, with the system perspective. Uh, but the problems we are working in structural health monitoring with and uh, structural health monitoring engineers, uh, the focus is so on the detail of the sensor. Uh, this is very good, but we need to connect this to uh, a system perspective and the system performance. Uh, another example uh, is uh, uh, industrial. Uh, Case study. This is not an infrastructure system, uh, but uh, some modern uh, salt tank monitoring. Uh, it is of uh, reinforced concrete, and uh, this is, uh, I think, an energy-saving device for uh, solar power plants. And uh, here the challenge is: uh, what is the most efficient uh, monitoring of the concrete strain and reinforcement uh, corrosion. We 
We have also cases where we have an extensive uh, monitoring record. Also, the most efficient way uh, of uh, or this this is uh, this we see this as the uh, uh, largest potential of our methodology. Uh, but I think this is very important. We also need to address these situations and what we can learn from this. So we could uh, look, uh, was it efficient to do the monitoring? So we have a posterior decision analysis. Um, or uh, I think this is uh, the better way. Um, maybe uh, we can um, look how we, uh, how we can sharpen our predictions, our prediction models for the next uh, case like this. And uh, also what could be the most efficient asset genesis with the experience of this uh, case study and uh, then to account uh, or and then go for the next case study and uh, but we then need to account for that uh, we may have uh, a different ground and a different case study and we have uh, another uncertainty model. So, um, I think the, the general challenges for our case study is um, beyond what is written here. I think the way of thinking and to have a clear decision scenario. I think this, has, uh, this is the major step we have been taking. This is maybe not our actual challenge anymore. Um, but, uh, of course, and uh, I think this goes also to a very important point, um, it is the level of detail. So, uh, and we already know, all of us know, uh, we are working in engineering with very detailed models, but the decisions based on the engineering predictions are taken with much similar models. And this, uh, uh, simple in, uh, in the sense of detail, uh, not necessarily in the sense of the goodness of the models, yeah? where they can be very, very, very efficient models. Uh, but the step is uh, here to work with the right level of detail. And if we do, uh, if we model a decision scenario, then the level of detail must not be this high. It must not necessarily include uh, all our sophisticated models. But we need to have a very clear interface uh, to uh, the model outcomes so that we can uh, maybe don't do the uh, decision analysis with these sophisticated models, but the input for all the decision analysis are, comes from very sophisticated models. So uh, we to yes to harmonize the level of details, we need uh, reasonable assumptions and simplifications uh, and uh, uncertainty representation. Uh, where are our uh, probabilistic models are based on? So uh, these uh, are two general challenges. Uh, then specific um, it is uh, we, we have been often observing this so uh, we have our system, SHM system um, and it provides an outcome how is it related to the uh, performance of the system this is This is a very important aspect uh, and 
uh, this uh, is not solved by industry nor infrastructure operators. This is the first task of us, of us as researchers, to, to provide the models. But the tasks of the, of the engineers and our people who are working within the decision scenario is that, the, that there is an alignment of the information we are getting from our uh, monitoring and inspection to uh, the uh, performance we are having or to the uh, decision scenario, which decisions should be supported with this information. And then, uh, of course, we have a complexity challenge, uh, so spatial time dependence, spatial and time resolution. Um, what is the right level of detail? This is what I already addressed. So, um, we have these 19 case studies. We have an approach of uh, how to work on. Uh, this is supported by our networking tools we're having, mainly by workshops, but also uh, with, uh, training schools. We had a very su successful training school last year uh, in November. Uh, in all aspects, also the location was very nice, organized by Maria Pina. Um, so, uh, in this sense, uh, there's a few levels of documentation. Internally, it's a fact sheet. Then there's publications of the uh, case study. We uh, follow the classification scheme. We would like to see the decision scenario, which uh, structure, what's the objective of the decisions, uh, and uh, what are the results? What is the value of information? Is it worth, in this case, to implement SHM? The very basic question. But what strategy, what location uh, should be monitored and how long? Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, the work on our case studies. Um, helps in our cost action on the level of the theoretical framework, on the appropriateness, uh, problem, appropriateness of tools and uh, methods we are having. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we learn from, uh, from case studies in general and specific insights, but uh, we also learn about uh, bottlenecks. So, enough for for the introduction part. I think this was already a lot of information. So, uh, yeah. Let's have a break, refresh uh, the mind, and then we go into the case studies. Thank you.